Okay. Hello to everybody. Today I'm going to speak about the synchronous data processing. Everything starts from a problem. We are developers, so we solve problems. And the problem of today is that in a world where users become more and more pretentious, we want to minimize the response time of our applications. For understanding the problem, we can make a simple example. Supposing you want to devise a catalog generator application, and we add the, the generator has to generate more than 300 pages in PDF, and for doing so, it has to fetch more than 30,000 records in our database representing products, and it wants to dispose records in pages with a certain order. We have heavy operations to do here, because we have to uh, distribute pages over the catalog and products over pages. And for each product, we want to dispose the, uh, its image, and maybe we want to elaborate the image. But the very problem, the real problem is that our user don't want to wait until we are doing these heavy operations. And even if they have to, because we can throw our operations away, they don't want to know it. They don't want to get stuck. So our problem is called synchrony. In a synchronous environment where the process A is our, client, our, our user and the process B is our application, the user sends a request to our application and the application take, takes into account uh, to do the, the job. In the meanwhile, the user remains blocked. And if the, the application takes a long time to do the, uh, the job, the user remains blocked for a long time. So we have, a need, we have needs. What are our needs? The first one is to prevent him out. Have you ever seen this screen? Any of you? Any liar? OK. This screen shows you the maximum execution time error. It, it, it's telling to you that some, something is going wrong and that you are doing heavy operation or at least time consuming operations. You can't prevent them out and not setting the time limit to infinite, but thinking to another type of uh, communication structure. Moreover, we want to guarantee eventually delivery. We want a system to which we send a task to do, and the system guarantees us that sooner or later, the job will be done. For doing so, we need a notification system. We, we need to know where, uh, when the job is sent to be processed, and we need to know when the processing is finished. So, in short, we need a synchrony. Again, if uh, the process A is our user and the process B is our application, when the user sends a request to our application, we want that the user can continue to navigate our website, and the website, uh, our application, takes into account to do the job, the heavy job in background, and, notif and the application eventually notifies the, the, the client, the user. Another property we'd like to have is called interoperability. Supposing you have uh, um, many applications written in many different languages around you, your company, you want a structure in which every application is able to construct a message and send this message that contains commands to our application, to our catalog generator. And our catalog generator is able to interpret each command and do its simple job. The solution exists and is called Advanced Message Queuing Protocol. AMQP is based on message exchanges and queues but it's also advanced and it's also a protocol. So 
Uh, AMP AMQP is a network protocol that enables conforming clients to communicate to conforming messaging middleware brokers. But what's a broker? A broker is an entity that implements the AMQP protocol and it simply receives messages from producer and sends messages to consumers. In between, a broker can store, buffer, or persist messages according to rules that you give it. Since AMQP is a network protocol, it's important to know that producer, broker, and consumer can all reside on different machines. So, we now uh, take a look more closely at, uh, at the broker. A broker is constituted of an exchange. An exchange is a simple thing. It receives messages from the producer and routes them to a queue. For doing so, it must exactly know what to do with a single message. It can append a message to one queue, to more than one queue, or it can discard messages. These rules are defined when you define the type of the exchange. Exchanges then distribute messages copies uh, to queues using rules called bindings. Lastly, we have the queue. You can imagine, for simplicity, a queue as an infinite buffer. It can store as many messages as you like. So, messaging brokers either deliver messages to consumers subscribed to a queue, or the consumer can fetch messages on demand. Queues, exchanges, and bindings are named, uh, um, and a broker uh, are also known as entity, broker, entity brokers. Okay, there exists a, a pure PHP library available through uh, Composer and written by Videl Alvaro. And you can install the, the library, adding in your uh, Composer JSON in the required section the, the library, in this case in the, stable, in the stable version. And you can install uh, simply by launching the Composer for, for install command. This library has been tested against RabbitMQ. Who of you uh, knows RabbitMQ? Good. RabbitMQ is our broker, is a messaging system. Now, we analyze different scenarios for solving different cluster of problems. The first scenario is the producer-consumer. In the producer-consumer pattern, we have a producer that sends message, a message and the consumer that receives the message. Every message uh, is stored into a queue. Okay, we can now start to write some code. After having installed the, uh, the library, we can import the namespace and we can create a connection instantiating a new AMQP connection object. Any AMQP connection object, uh, you can pass to any AMQP connection object that knows the port, a user, and a password. So it's important to know that the connection can be local or remote. An AMQP connection object abstracts the socket connection for sending messages to the broker. From the connection, we create the channel, invoking the channel function. Now, we want to send messages to, Q, to the queue. For doing so, we have to declare the queue. Using the queue declare function, the first parameter is the name of the queue, in this case, catalog. And for each page of the catalog, we want to publish a message to the queue named catalog. But the message we send is not our page, but it's an AMQP message. Why? Because it's another layer of abstraction. You can, you can, set, uh, you can set up an AMQP message object with whenever array of bytes you want. In this case, a page object. 
you can pass an array uh, or a, a simply a simply string, whatever you want. On the other side, there is the consumer that want to consume messages, and we say uh, and we say that with the basic consume function, we are saying that we want to consume messages from the catalog queue, and for each message, we want to apply a callback function. To the callback function is passed, is passed a, a message object in what's body that is our PDF, uh, our page object. So we can call the generate PDF function. The while cycle means that as, as long as there are callbacks, we want to wait for new message. It's important because if we don't write these lines of code, we start the consumer, and if there are mes messages in the, in the catalog queue, the consumer consumes that messages. If don't, the consumer simply quits. The while cycle prevents that the consumer quits. Another important thing is that we are declaring the queue both in the consumer and in the producer, but the queue is created only once. This because of the first flag set to false. And this property ensures that we can start first the producer and last the consumer, or vice versa. An important thing is that we can distribute our code over consumer. In this way, we can parallelize work and we can gain easy scalability. But an important thing to keep in mind is that messages are dispatched by default with a round-robin algorithm. Who of you knows the round-robin algorithm? It's a, it's a simple algorithm. It simply means that messages are dispatched in a circular way. So on average, each consumer receives the same number of messages. Okay, it can happen that consumers can die, especially if they are on different machines. <laughs> yeah. You can think uh, OS problems, crashes, uh, network uh, delays, overloads, whatever you want. And since the broker delete the message after sending the message to the consumer, if the consumer die, we lost me the message. And for supporting consumer dying, we have to add another feature to our mes messaging system. And this feature is, is called message acknowledgement. A message acknowledgement is a simple form of message that the consumer sent to the broker for telling it that it has finished to elaborate the job referred to a specific message it receives. It's simply. We can switch acknowledgement on in the basic consume function, setting the second flag to false, because the second flag means no arc. So if we want acknowledgement on, we, we have to switch to false. Yeah, tricky. And we have to remember to send acknowledgement through the basic CAC function in our callback. But be aware, you mustn't forget to send acknowledgement. If you switch the acknowledgement function to on, and you uh, forget to send acknowledgement in, in your callback function, when your client quits, RabbitMQ try to send all the, mess all the unacted messages and will need more and more mem uh, memory as you won't be able to release any unacted message. So be aware. We've seen what's happened when consumers die. But what if the broker die? Even the broker can die. When the broker die again, we lost messages. We can prevent broker dying again with another property called durability. For doing so, we have to mark both the channel and the message as durable. How can we do? 
In the first, uh, we, when we want to uh, declare the queue as durable, we can pass to the queue declare function the second flag to true. The second flag means that the queue will survive to server restarts. And it's not enough because we have to mark the message as persistent. When we create an EMQP message, we, we can pass an array of options, and in this case, we want to set the delivery mode set it to persistent. But you might have noticed that dispatching messages is not fair by now due to the round robin algorithm. For this reason, we want to introduce QoS politics. It can happen that for certain instances of the round robin dispatches, dispatching where there are all the odd messages representing heavy tasks to do and all the even messages representing the lightweight tasks to do, and, we, and if we have two consumer, if we dispatch uh, the messages with the round robin algorithm, the first consumer receives all the uh, heavy job uh, whereas the second consumer receives all the lightweight jobs. And in general, we, we want to avoid this situation. We can do so by setting the QoS on the, uh, on the uh, RabbitMQ. And we, uh, in this way, we are telling to RabbitMQ that we want to, se uh, to send messages, that we want that the broker sends messages all to... The, all to only to that consumers that sends an acknowledgement to the broker. So when the first message is delivered to the first consumer, the broker don't send any message more uh, to the first consumer and remains uh, in active waiting uh, until, until the first consumer send an, an acknowledgement to the broker. OK, so far so good, I think. OK, we want to switch the, uh, uh, to another scenario, the publish-subscribe scenario. What's the difference here? In the producer-consumer scenario, we are sending messages to dif different messages to different consumer. We want to do a completely, a, completely dif uh, a completely different thing here. We want that the same copy of the message is sent to multiple consumer. So we have to introduce our lovely exchange. We can declare an exchange to the exchange declare function. We want that our exchange represent a chat room. So we send a message representing a, a message. And we want that the chat room exchange simply broadcast the message to all the consumer in the chat, in the chat room. For doing so, we declare the exchange named chat room of type fanout. So the algorithm behind the fanout type of the exchange is straightforward. It simply broadcasts messages to all the consumer. On the other side, uh, the, for, for sending messages, we retrieve a message to send in the room through the get a message to, to send in the room function. We construct a, an EMQP message object and we publish the object, uh, we publish the, the message to the chat room exchange. There's a different here, a difference here, because previously we, s we have sent a message directly to the queue. Now we are sending the message to the exchange. And we are telling the exchange that it has to do the work for us. Now it's the subscriber turn. And we want to create a queue. Another difference here. Since we want to bind our queue to the exchange, we want to be sure that our queue name is unique. And for doing so, we can declare a queue with an empty name, and RabbitMQ generates a unique name for the queue for us. 
So we retrieve the name of the queue in the queue underscore name variable, and now we can bind the queue to the chat room. Exchange. From this point, every message sent to the exchange is broadcasted to all the queues subscribed to the exchange. Okay, so we can consume the message with the basic consume function using the name of the queue and applying the read message callback. The read message callback. And we, we, we are sure that we receive all the messages of the exchange. In the routing scenario, we want to add feature to our publish subscribe pattern because we want that our consumer can subscribe only to a subset of messages. For doing so, we have to introduce two new concepts, at least one, the routing key concept. But before, we have to, uh, to change the type of the exchange from fan out to direct. The algorithm behind the direct uh, type of the exchange is simple. It simply push, pushes messages to that queues was routing keys matches perfectly with the binding keys of the queue. Now we see. So, we declare the exchange of type direct and we get a message to, f to send in the friend's chat room, and we build an AMQP message object, and we publish the message, we publish the message in the chat room exchange, marking the message with the routing key friends. On, uh, the consumer on the other side wants to listen to messages with routing keys, friends and colleagues, and for doing so, you have to bind the queue on the chat room exchange with the binding with the binding keys friends and colleagues after doing so we uh, we again can uh, consume messages from the queue applying for each messages the read message function but we want more although routing improved our system it can do routing uh, based on multiple criteria. Uh, for doing so, we need the topic pattern. In the topic pattern, the topic pattern is an evolution of the routing pattern in which we, we again change the type of the exchange from direct to topic. And by doing so, the routing key can be an arbitrary string more. It must be a dot delimited string. So, in our case, if we want to, uh, to represent an environment when a consumer can subscribe to messages representing vehicles, we want that uh, the, the first consumer subscri uh, is subscribed only to that me those messages was routing keys matches with star.car.star. .star. And the second consumer listen to messages with routing keys race.hash and star.star.thread. You might have noticed that we have two special char characters, the hash and the star. The star stands for exactly one word, whereas the hash stands for zero or more than one word. So the first consumer want to listen to messaging messages representing cars, whereas the second consumer wants messages representing race cars or red cars. We are filtering messages. So, if we want to send a yellow sport car, a yellow sport car message is represented with a sport.car.yellow routing key. Which consumer receives the message? Don't be shy. The first? Yeah, the first. Because port matches with star, car matches with car, and yellow matches with star. A red race motorbike, represented with a race motor, dot motorbike dot red 
routine key. The first or the second? second. The second. Once or twice? Once. We want that the second consumer is able to listen to messages was routine keys matches with race dot whatever you want or routine key a word dot a word dot red or so a, a rabbit MQ is clever and he he know that he knows that the message is to be delivered only once even if it matches with both routine keys of the second consumer. Again a red race car represented with a race dot car dot red routing key. Both. Well. Once or twice. Yeah. The message is delivered only once for consumer. For each consumer even if it matches with both the routing keys of the second consumer. The last, I promise, a blue city one, represented with a city.one.blue routing key. Which consumer receives th receive this message? No one. no one. The message is simply discarded because it doesn't match with any routing key of any consumer. Okay, I have a bonus for you. <laughs> I want to give you a prize since you are not sleeping. I think. <laughs> if you don't want to install a, a RabbitMQ instance of your local machines, the, there is on, uh, on the internet uh, a cool service called cloud, cloudimqp.com. You can register to this service and uh, it provides you with a an host and uh, the credential for opening the connection and you can test your application with uh, messaging brokers completely working on the web. So, we are reaching the end and I want to remember you that asynchronous data processing can be done easily even in PHP but not, all, uh, not only in PHP and your life can become happier and your applications can become stronger. Oh, I was forgetting. My name is Andrea Giuliano. Uh, my Twitter account is bit underscore shark and I work in Rome as a software engineer. Uh, my website and please read my talk and thank you. If you have any, any question, if we have time, I don't know. No question? One question. Uh, I've been using RabbitMQ for like two or three years, and at any point in using it, have you felt like the complication that it provides is ever worth actually learning how that shit works? Like, it's just wildly compl complicated and not that healthy, in my experience. Do you feel like it was worth learning? Yeah, it's it's your point of view because I have <laughs> used RabbitMQ in production, and I can say that the the catalog generator problem is one of my problem. And when you have to generate, when you have to to handle with big data, it's important to to introduce a synchronicity, a synchronicity. Yeah, to your applications. So, yeah. We are PHP developers, so we, are, we used to <laughs> easily. Other questions? No questions. Okay. Thank you again.